that the last, fruits the last of the elections. Spirit and all I can say about that is inside we need us, to pray for our president. We have we those. Pray. God um, endowed and, love, uh, joy, peace. Uh, if I say anything more than that, I start getting myself in trouble. Uh, I just, well, glory to God. But um, God knew ahead of time. And he knows who would be elected next time. He does. He, he knows. He knows about those things. Uh, my personal opinion is that even though Christians were praying for a godly, spirit-filled man or woman to be president of the United States, for the end-time scenarios to happen the way that they're to happen, we needed to have a president, the president that we have. And um, uh, so we just have to trust God. And um, that's it. Just trust Him. Even, even though America uh, isn't the America that most of us grew up in. That's not just one man's doing. But America has changed greatly in the last six, six years. And so God knows what's in the future. And He can bring these gifts or manifestations of what the future holds. So that's what a word, a word, it's a word. It's, it's, it's word or words about future events, future situations. Now what I'd like to do is then take us to the Bible and show examples of words of wisdom. I think that'll help us grasp a hold how God uses this gift, this manifestation. So let's start out by going to um, Isaiah 46. Isaiah 46. And this is God's calling card, or you can say God's business card. This is what establishes our God as the true and living God. Isaiah 46, and we'll be reading verse 9 and 10. Isaiah 46, verses 9 and 10. It says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring... The end from the beginning. God has declared the end even at the beginning. The Bible has declared the end and it was declared from the beginning. It says here, And from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. So this is the difference between the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as compared to any other God that people have had is that God is the one that wrote down what would happen. And guess what? Everything that He has said would happen has happened and will happen. Not one Peace will be left out, what he declared would happen. So you can be sure, the church is going to be caught away. You can be sure that the Antichrist will raise up. You can be sure that for seven years, the judgment of God will be poured out on this earth. You can be sure that Jesus will return to this earth and establish his kingdom in Jerusalem. And we, the saints, will follow him on white horses. Why? Because they're declared in here. He's declaring the end from the beginning. No other God can do this because they're not really God. That's why. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, so I wanted to establish this. This is um, how God has declared that He is God because He can tell the future. 
There's also a scripture here in Isaiah 48. Let's look at that real quick. Isaiah 48, verses 3 through 6. It says, I have declared the former things from the beginning, and they went forth out of my mouth. I showed them, I did them suddenly, and they came to pass. Because I knew that thou art obstinate, and thy neck is an iron sinew, and thy brow brass, I have even from the beginning declared it to thee. Before it came to pass, I showed it to thee, lest thou shouldest say, Mine idol hath done them, and my graven image and my molten image hath commanded them. Praise God. So again, God is declaring that He's different from all the other gods. You know, some people worship cars. Well, that car can't tell you the future. He can't tell you what's going to happen. That, that idol that's on somebody's shelf, um, it, can't, it can't tell the future. None other God can. Praise God. Okay, let's start the book of uh, beginnings. Genesis chapter 15. Let's turn there. Genesis chapter 15. I want to show you an instance where God declared something that hadn't happened yet. Genesis chapter 15. You'll remember this story that God was uh, cutting covenant with Abram. And he had him take those animals and cut them in half. And starting at verse number 12, it tells us, When the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And God said to Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years." And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward shall they come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Uh, Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come out, hither out again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Okay, so here it is. Some 4,000 years ago, God spoke this to Abram. He said, your seed will go where? There'll be strangers in a land, right? That's not theirs. And they shall be servants and shall be afflicted 400 years. But... After that, God will judge, and what will happen? They will leave with great substance. How many of you remember the story? Huh? What happened? Moses came back. God brought him back to the children of Israel who were serving Egypt. They had been there 400 years, just as God said. And how did they leave? With great substance. With a high hand, God delivered them. And the Bible says they spoiled the Egyptians. Everyone care to calculate how many years between when God said it and it was accomplished? Well, let's see. Abram begat Isaac. Isaac begat Jacob. Jacob begat the twelve. Of course, we know what happened then. Joseph was sold into slavery. He went down to Egypt, right? Then there was the famine in the Canaan land. So the fam- Abram's family was relocated uh, down with, with Joseph, right? That's how they ended up in Egypt. And when they first went, they were not slaves and captives, but it came over time. So we're talking hundreds of years have transpired between when God said it and it happened just as He said it would. And of course, we know then that they were delivered out of Egypt. They wandered in the desert for 40 years and eventually they made it back into the promised land. But God said it 
And it happened that very way that he said. He also told him that he would be buried in a good old age. Anyone remember how old Abraham was when he died? I don't remember. I didn't look it up. I just wondered if anyone remembered. He was, well, remember, Sarah, his wife, died. After he was over 100, well, it's probably, he was probably about 115, I think, or so, just roughly, around that age when uh, Sarah died, or older than that. And then he married again. And he kept having kids. You got to read that. I mean, it's, it's interesting stuff. I don't know how old was he, man. He was at, he's at least 130, 140 years old. Well, it could be. I mean, he lived a long time. <laughs> okay, all right. I, I knew it was a long time after, um, you know, after Sarah had had passed. Praise the Lord. So, um, God said he would be a good old age, and he made it. Praise the Lord. Okay, now let's look at another promise. Genesis chapter 17, verse number 19, it says, And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I will bless him, and will make him fruitful, and multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget. And I'll make him a great nation, but my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. God knows. Say this out loud. God knows. He knows. And there are times that it's the will of God for him to reveal future things to us. Now, some of you are thinking, oh, God, reveal to me who's going to win that horse race so I can bet the money. Or give me those numbers for the, what is it, the high ball or low ball or whatever, the, the power ball, <laughs> whatever. Lord, give me the numbers. or what? I, no, no, God's not going to help you gamble. That's not what this is about, praise God. So, he does know the future. He knows exactly, praise the Lord. All right, let's go to another example in the Bible. Let's go to uh, Samuel, 1 Samuel. First Samuel chapter 1. I'll eventually find it. It's here in my Bible. 1 Samuel chapter 1. Remember the story of Hannah, who had gone to... The presence of the Lord. And she was very sad because she could not have children. Her womb had been shut up, and so she was crying out to the Lord. And Eli the priest was ministering before uh, the presence of God there. And it says here that. Eli first thought she was drunk, but then she poured out her heart to him. And verse 17 says, Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat. And her countenance was no more sad. And as you know then, it came to pass in verse 20 that the time was come after Hannah had conceived that she bare a son, and they called his name Samuel. So Samuel was birthed because of the prayers of Mother Hannah, but also it was declared by God before she even conceived that she would have a child. Praise the Lord. God knows. 
Now, before I take some other examples, can someone think of something you know of that you've read in the Bible that God revealed something ahead of time? You think of something? Anybody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, concerning Isaac. Yes, yeah, yep, yep that's right. Yeah, we, we did read that. Uh huh. Amen. Yes, Dorothy. Yes, that's right. The angel came and shared that word of wisdom. She was highly favored of God. And she received that word of wisdom. And because she received it, it manifests in her life. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's go to 2 Kings. 2 Kings and chapter number 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. And I want us to start reading at verse 14. This is the story of the Shunammite woman. Remember the Shunammite woman? In the King James, they called her a great woman. It wasn't because she was a huge woman. It was, she was a woman of great substance. She was a, a woman of, of great um, stature socially. She was, she was a strong woman. And um, verse 14 says, uh, Elisha said, What then is to be done for her? Because she had made him a, uh, a room to stay when he passed through. And so she provided a place for him. She said, What should be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Verily, she has no child, and her husband's old. And he, and he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, About this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. Well, obviously there was something going on. Either her husband was not able to have children or medically, you know, she had an issue with having children. Something had prevented them from having a child. But the Lord spoke through the prophet a word of wisdom and said, About this season or about this set time, you shall embrace a son. So not only was the declaration you're going to have a child, but also said what it's going to be. And how was her aunt? She said, No, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thine handmaiden. It, it was like, it's too hard for me to believe this. That's too good to be true. But you know when it's a word of wisdom? If God is speaking, we, we better receive it. We better receive it. And of course, what happened? The woman conceived, bare a son at that season. So it was a son. She conceived, it was a son. And it was a season as God had declared through the prophet. As he said unto her, according to the time of life. Amen. So see, God uses words of wisdom in the earth to bring to pass His will. Many times, it's to help get the people in line to do what God had called them to do. Because <laughs> sometimes we, uh, we can resist what God has for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, um, how about another example? Let's go to uh, the Gospel of John. John 21. And by the way, I'm just taking a few examples from the Bible. The Bible is full of examples of these fruits, or these gifts, excuse me, these manifestations of the Spirit. And in the Old Testament, like I mentioned last week, you will see um, seven of the nine gifts. You will not see tongues and interpretation, but you'll see all the other seven gifts in manifestation. 
Okay, so John chapter 21, if you found that, let's start reading at verse number 18. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, he's talking to Peter. This is after he asked him three times, feed, you know, feed my sheep, do you love me, feed my lambs, and that, that uh, interaction. This is after his resurrection. Jesus said, Truly, truly, or verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thine hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. Now, does anyone understand what that's saying? Well, the next verse gives us a clue. This spake he signifying by what death he should glorify God. So he is speaking how Peter would die. He said, when you're, you know, when you're a child, uh, when you were younger, you, you dressed yourself, you walked wherever you wanted to go, but when you're older, you're going to stretch forth your hands. And you're going to be taken somewhere you don't want to go. Peter was crucified. For the gospel's sake. So Jesus declared ahead of time how Peter was going to die. In fact, I've, I've heard that they even crucified him upside down. Maybe you've heard that as well. So Jesus was used by the Holy Spirit to speak forth that word of wisdom. How about another account? In John 11, in John chapter 11, verse 1, says, Now a certain man, Lazarus, was sick in his hometown of Bethany with Mary and Martha, his sisters. And so the sisters sent to Jesus, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. So they had some sort of method. It's not like we have today. You know, email spoils us. If someone is on their computer or has email on their phone, you can instantly receive a message or a text message or whatever. I mean, back then they probably had people on horseback or runners that would run with notes. That was their, their way of communication. And so they sent a note to Jesus and he would have gotten that probably within a day or so. He would have got a note. And when Jesus heard uh, that he was sick, Jesus said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of, uh, that the Son of God might be glorified. Now, of course, we know that Jesus didn't immediately go to Bethany to minister Lazarus. Lazarus, no. He abode two days after that in the same place. And so, uh, he told his disciples, we, we're going to go now to Lazarus. And they were concerned because he was getting much persecution, uh, going to Jerusalem and so forth. Bethany is just outside of Jerusalem. Uh, and Jesus said to them, Our friend Lazarus, this is verse 11, sleepeth, but I go that I may awaken him out of sleep. Of course, they said, Lord, if he has taken a nap, if he's sleeping, he's doing good. <laughs> but Jesus finally had to let them know um, he's dead. Plainly, Lazarus is dead. So Jesus first declared this is not unto death ahead of time but he knew that he died but he knew that he was gonna what raise him up hallelujah God wants to manifest these in us too this isn't just for us to read about in the Bible he wants to manifest words of wisdom and knowledge in our lives do you think it would help us? Huh? Anybody? Amen? Amen. Praise God. If, if, if the Lord reveals something in the future or reveals 
if something is not taken care of, and if we don't repent about something, this will be the outcome. He's giving us a chance to, you know, get some things right. Praise God for that. Hallelujah. You know, the Lord will even help you in driving around. He'll give you a word of wisdom. Yeah, you don't need to drive that direction. You need to go a different way. That's being led by the Holy Spirit. Okay, I just have a few more examples to share with you. Uh, Matthew 26. Let's go to Matthew 26. In this uh, account here. Jesus said, verse 1, It came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings, He said to His disciples, You know that after two days is the feast of Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. So He was sharing a word of wisdom to His disciples. Of course, they didn't understand it. it, was, it they were just kind of blinded to all of this. But He declared to them ahead of time what was going to happen happen. Of course, we also know something else that happened uh, right at that time. And we can look at Matthew 27, uh, verse 3. It says, Then Judas, which had betrayed him when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. And the chief priest took the silver pieces. How many pieces were there? That's what it says in verse 3. 30. 30 pieces. Chief priest took the pieces and said, It's not lawful for us to put it in the offering or in the treasury. Because it's the price of blood, they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Wherefore, that field was called the field of blood until this day. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet, saying, They took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value, and gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed me. Well, what that scripture is referring to is what was spoken many, many years before. And we'll find it in Zechariah chapter 11. Look in your Bible. This will be uh, our last thing that we will look up today. Zechariah. It's almost the end of the Old Testament. Zechariah chapter 11. Starting at verse 12. Again, this is the prophet speaking a word of wisdom. And I said unto them, If you think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price thirty pieces of silver. And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter, a goodly price that I was prized at of them. And I took the thirty pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Isn't that amazing? How God knew specifically that Judas would be bought off for thirty pieces of silver. And those thirty pieces of silver would be thrown into the temple, of, would be cast into the temple of God. And the money would be then used to buy a field. Isn't that amazing? But again, God knows about it. This is what makes Him God. This is what makes us assured that we're ser serving the true and living God. Amen. Amen. So know this, that God wants to use, just as those fruits of the Spirit, He wants to use these gifts, these manifestations uh, for the body of Christ to reveal God to the world. Amen. So it's not just for ministers. 
It's not for those that are the five-fold ministry. It's for the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. And I say, well, how, how will I get those things to manifest? Well, it's not something we make manifest. Now, we can make Love and joy and peace and these fruits of the Spirit, we can decide to let those flow out of us. But again, like we talked about last week, the gifts of the Spirit, these manifestations, they come from the outside upon us. It's nothing we can control. But I know this, the closer we're walking with God, the more time we're spending with Him, the more opportunity and more availability there will be for these gifts to manifest. Amen. Any questions before we close tonight? Any comments? Any questions? So we will pick up next week. We will cover uh, word of knowledge. And we will, di- we will cover discerning of spirits, the other revelation gift, next week. No questions? All right, let's all stand. Praise God. Father, as we close tonight, we want to thank you that you desire to use your people in this earth. And Lord, I know one very special way of reaching lost people is to speak into their lives through these gifts, through these manifestations. So Lord God, may we desire the best gift to reach people with the love of God, with the good news of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for the things that we studied tonight. We see very clearly that you do know the end from the beginning. Lord, we cannot make these things happen in our lives, but Lord, we can make ourselves available. So Lord, may we do our part that you can be glorified in the earth. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God.